tea and crumpets. What could be more English? Uh, excuse me. You never mind that. You don't mind none of this. I think we're going to have to rename this Mike and Bentley show, aren't we? So today I'm working in my 10x10 journal and I have some old collage tissue paper from Hazel and Ruby that I want to use up. So I'm going to stick down an entire big piece. I'm not going to tear it up or anything. I'm going to keep it in one piece. I'm going to glue it down using the matte medium from Mod Podge. And I'm just going to glue it over the entire of the page, trying to keep as many of the wrinkles and bubbles out of it as I possibly can without ripping and tearing it. And once it's all stuck down and then I'm happy that it's all nicely tucked onto the page I'm just going to bring up my heat gun and give it a quick blast before I move on and add some colour. Our first colour today is the Pale Powder Blue Acrylic Paint from Reeves which I'm just going to dab on with a baby wipe so I'm just going to smear it across the page around about two thirds of the way down so I'm creating a kind of sky effect today using the paint. I'm going to keep the paint wet on the page when I add my second colour so that I can easily blend it between the two. So my second colour is the Mustard Seed Distress Paint which I haven't used for quite some time. So I'm actually going to use a lot of Distress Paints today because they've just been sitting there gathering dust and I thought it was about time that I used them up. So as you can see I'm using the Baby Wipe to blend out the transition from the blue to the yellow. I'm not going mad because some of this is going to be covered up anyway. I just want to just remove those harsh join lines between the, the colour blocks. And my third colour is the Shabby Shutters Green Distress Paint again from Ranger, Tim Holtz and Ranger and I'm just going to add that at the bottom of my page and just repeat the same process with the Baby Wipe. Just blend it in with the, um, the just dabbing motions to make sure that I've got no kind of sweeping brush marks and that kind of thing. And you will see me add a little bit more paint on um, as and where it's needed. And when I'm happy with the colour as is, I'm just going to grab the heat gun and just set it in place before moving on to the next layer. And for my next layer I'm going to be using the Finnebear Vanishing Circles 12x12 stencil, some titanium white acrylic paint and my 6 inch speedball brayer. And I've just put the white titanium paint onto a um, styrofoam plate just so I can smear it without getting all of my mat. And I'm just going to use the brayer and push the paint through the stencil. Now it's not going to be exact, I know it's not going to go through perfectly but I'm going to grab a sponge in a little while and just to smooth out some of those edges that I haven't quite managed to get the paint through. And there I've just grabbed a small piece of craft sponge and I've just loaded it up with the paint from the styrofoam plate and I'm just going to dab that through where I don't think it's quite caught properly. And I think I'm happy with that so all I have to do now is just to grab my heat gun just to dry it off before moving on to the next step. So the next step that I'm going to do now is I need to create my own kind of little stencil shape. Now for this I'm using my X-Cut Circle Cutter and I'm just creating a four inch um, circle. I'm just cutting a four inch circle out of a piece of card and I'm just going to, when I can get the clip back over the blade, I can never remember how it goes back on, there we go. I'm not going to cut myself now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim down the excess from this aperture that I've created. And then using one of the pieces of card that I've cut off, 
I'm going to grab my masking tape and then I'm going to first of all try it with a post-it note just to make sure that everything's going to be fine. I'm not quite happy with that because the post-it notes aren't um, level but I want to make sure that it is as level as I can get it. So I abandon the post-it note idea as you can see me scrumple it up and throw it away. Grab a piece of the card from the excess and then grab some decorator's tape, some masking tape. I'm going to just tack that extra piece of card across my circle. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a little while. All I'm doing here is just removing off any of the excess masking tape uh, and so I've got a little bit of a shape which is a bit more sturdy to use. So I'm happy with the shape that I've created now. All I need to do is to grab some more distress paint. This time I'm going for the spiced marmalade distress paint, an orangey colour. And I'm just going to use the dauber end, so the actual sponge, and I'm going to just dab that through my little stencil that I've created uh, in three areas on the page. Now I will just dab off some of the excess with a baby wipe um, because I thought it might be a little bit too strong and it would be nice just to see a little bit of the background showing through but I changed my mind later on. But that's what it's all about, changing your mind as you're going along. So I'm just adding a little bit of extra colour as and where I think it's needed, um, where I may have taken a little bit too much off, I've added a little bit more back in again, and I just keep going backwards and forwards. I'm never quite happy with the amount of paint that's on until right at the very end. So I'm a little bit happier now with the depth of colour on the page with those shapes so I'm going to grab my next colour which is the Vintage Photo Distress Paint and for this I'm just going to use the same stencil again but this time I'm just going to go around the bottom and right hand edge just to kind of give it a little bit of depth and dimension just to add maybe like a hint of a shadow. And when doing the middle one, I realise that I have actually gone over the tip of the one on the bottom right, which means that it looks as now like it's actually gone behind the one in the middle. That's not what I was going for, so I will remedy that later on. So as I'm looking at the page, I'm thinking the orange on my shapes isn't quite as vibrant as I wanted it to be, so I thought I would try and use the Tiger Lily archive link and add some of that colour back in again. So I'm going to try and add a little bit more of that oranginess back into my shapes. So I'm a lot happier with the depth of colour on that now so I'm just going to grab my heat gun and dry off the ink before moving on to the next step. And the next step is just to remedy that little mistake in that top left hand corner where I've gone behind so I'm just going to bring that back into the foreground again. So I'm just going over it with the paint and then drying it off so that it all actually matches the right perspective. So I'm a lot happier with the way that looks now. So the one in the middle now looks as though it's in the background and the two at the front now look like they are in the foreground. So I know I'm not going to be adding any more overall colours so I just thought I'd take this time just to trim off the excess tissue from the borders of my page. And there we go. So the next step then is to grab the food bowl pen and all I'm going to do now is just to start adding in some of the detailing, so the stems, 
that I'm going to create for my abstract flowers. I'm sure you've guessed that's what they were by now. So I'm just adding in the stems and then I can add on the detail that I want to add on to the flowers themselves. I really like using the food ball pen over acrylic paints because you get some real startling sharp black contrast lines with the uh, with this food ball pen. It's just one of the best pens I've found for writing over um, smooth surfaces like acrylic paint. So to add the finishing touches to my page I'm using the Tim Holtz Small Talk stickers and I've identified three little phrases that work well together that I'm going to position just above each flower on my page. And if you're having difficulty reading what each one of them say, it says live your life, collect beautiful moments, and life is good. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this um, almost autumnal shade art journal page come together. If you have enjoyed it, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the very end of this video. It's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.